everybody and welcome to this video thank you for tuning in uh, so what this video is going to be about is all about using react hooks with the react context api um, and so just a brief history react came out with a new version just recently um, which had what are called hooks and this allows you to easily use do a bunch of different things essentially you don't need to have classes anymore um, but one of the neat things it does is it opens up a lot of different patterns for state management um, and how you go about uh, where you put your state in your app what controls it and all these different patterns are starting to emerge so today I'm going to talk about one pattern that I've found particularly useful um, this is kind of a global state pattern essentially you have one place where all of your state and all of your context goes and then anywhere in your app you can reach within that context or that state to get exactly and only exactly what you want um, so we'll go ahead and do that so right now I've gone over to stackblitz.com and started a new react project this is uh, the bare bones right here so first thing we're going to do is we're going to get rid of this component since uh, we, ne we don't really need it anyways. Um, and we're going to get rid of this style.css uh, here. Ah, I was doing that in font family. That's fine. Uh, so let's just get rid of this and we'll say const app is equal to an empty functional stateless component for now. Uh, we'll get rid of the construction and, this, uh, and the state that's in there. We don't need this render function. We'll leave the return for now since we are going to be putting state and context in here. Uh, and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Let's take that down. We got to get rid of this component here. Um, okay. So now the first thing we gotta do, we gotta actually come up with some app idea so I can show you how to implement this global state. So first let's just uh, put in h1 tag, react, hooks, and context. This will be our little title. Um, and then what we'll have, we'll have fruits and we'll have vegetables showing up on our screen. Um, and so we'll, there'll be two completely different states, uh, but they'll be able to be used in different parts of our application independently, and they'll be managed in the same place. So let's just go ahead and say today's fruit is, um, and then we'll just say apple for now, this is what's gonna be changed. So now let's go ahead and implement state using hooks. So we don't need this component anymore. Uh, we'll just get uh, use uh, state and now in order to use that state we can just say const fruit comma set fruit is equal to use state and we'll set the starting fruit to uh, we'll just set it to an empty string like this uh, well actually no let's just start it with apple like that Okay, and so now we should be able to say today's fruit is fruit, like so. And nothing changes in our app, which is great. So now we are using state to manage um, what this text says right here. Uh, so now what we want to do is we want to actually pull the state out of here and put it into a context so that we can use it anywhere in our app. Um, because maybe we want to have uh, the, the part that controls the fruit in a different component. And we don't want to have to pass in these variables for every single component that we want to control it in. So we'll go ahead and get some context. So we'll say use context. And we'll go ahead and create um, our context first so we can do that outside of the actual application so const fruit context is equal to react.create context and uh, we'll start it off with just an uh, 
Apple just so it has a starting context. And then what we'll do is we'll, we got to put our provider in here. Uh, so we'll go ahead and put this at the top here. We'll say fruit context dot provider and value. This is the initial value that it starts off with. Um, and now what we're going to do here is we're going to put these two variables into the value of this provider so that both the actual fruit and the setter can be um, retrieved from this context provider. So we'll say fruit set fruit like so. And then what we gotta do is we gotta close it like that. Just like that. So now we have our provider here. And so now that we have our provider wrapping around it, anything within this provider can be accessed uh, via using the use context hook, um, which we were about to use right here. But, so we could do something like this and then use context, but this gets messy really quick. So what we're gonna do real quick is we're gonna create an app, an actual app component. This is really an index component. So I'm going to change this to index, change that to index. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll create a new file called app.jsx. Uh, we'll just do .js. Uh, and then we're going to need this, most of this. We don't need this anymore. And we'll just say const app is equal to this and returns this. And we're going to put everything that's inside of our provider in uh, this app file right here. Okay. And now in here, we're just going to put app like so. And we got to import the app, import app from app, like that. And let's see, what did I? All right, so if we save that and go to, oh, we got to export it, export default app. All right, so now we're getting this error. Fruit is not defined because we don't have direct access to it without using our context here. So we don't need to use state in this file. Um, we can just say const, and then using the the state hook, same syntax. You can say uh, at our fruit, comma set fruit is equal to use context, and then we got to use the fruit context. And that means we got to import the fruit context from the index file, but it's not being exported. So let's go ahead and export that like so. And um, we're not actually using the use context hook here, so we can get rid of that. All right. So now what's happening is our state is being set in our provider, in our index file. And then our app, which is not getting any props passed to it, is using the use context to pull that fruit content out with, with using the same uh, context creation right here. So now this can get a little messy really quickly. Um, and so the idea of having a global store is a place where you can put your state and all of your providers. So we'll go ahead and create that now. So we'll create a file called store.js and what I want store to do is I essentially just want because so here, here's actually the problem right here so the next task we have is to actually create another context uh, this time it's going to be the vegetable context and we'll just say tomato and and then we're going to have another provider here and vegetable provider value is uh, vegetable and we're going to set vegetable 
And then we're gonna have another state hook here. Vegetable and set. Vegetable and we're gonna start it off with tomato. Okay, and then we're gonna need to close this tag right here. And you can see very quickly how messy this is getting. Um, am I missing something here? Oh, I gotta close it. There we go. So you can see how messy this can get really quickly. Um, so the idea of a state or a store, excuse me, is a place to have all of this and all of this without it getting too messy in your index file or your app.js file or wherever it may be. So what we'll do now, we have our store um, and I'm actually just gonna copy this, go to our store, we're gonna import React and then we're gonna need create, or we're gonna need a use hook, use state, sorry from react and go ahead and just say constant store is equal to keep that and this is actually going to take one parameter of children and what we're going to do is we're going to render whatever children are passed into here into our provider so children like so and then we're going to export default store like that uh, and so now what we can do is we can go back to our index file. We can import it. So import store from store like so. And then we can get rid of all this. We want to keep our app here. So we'll say store. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Store like so. Um, now we got to make sure we have our context in our store as well. So create that there. Okay. And we don't need our hooks here anymore. We can actually get rid of this and get this a little cleaner, a little more simple, hopefully. Okay. So now, oh, whoops, wrong file. Let's keep that in there. And the index file, we don't need these. And this is where we can clean up. Okay, what is it telling me? Cannot read context of undefined. So now we've got to go back to our app and change where we get fruit context from since it's no longer in the index, it's in the store. And there we go. So now what's happening is in our index file, we have a store which contains our context providers, which is then rendering the app inside. So now all of this content in your store, which has your state for your vegetables and your fruits, is getting passed into your app, which at any point can use that state um, in the form of context as we're seeing here. So let's go ahead and do another example. So we'll go ahead and uh, we'll make a component called vegetable. And we're going to import vegetable from vegetable. And we'll go ahead and create a new file, vegetable.jsx. Okay. And we'll import React from React. And we're going to need um, use context. And we're going to need the uh, import vegetable context from the store and what else are we going to need uh, let's just see what this looks like so const vegetable is equal to and we're going to say const uh, vegetable and set vegetable like that and we're going to get this is equal to um, use context vegetable context like so and then we're just going to go ahead and uh, return um, just a we'll do a uh, let's see here an unordered list and we'll say you know what let's make this 
vegetables. Now we'll, we'll keep it one vegetable. So we'll just say, so we'll have span, and this is going to be the vegetable. And actually, let's make these divs so that they're, they're online. All right. Uh, now we got to make sure we export it. Okay, so now we can see the vegetables right there. Now let's go ahead and do something kind of cool. So button uh, on click is equal to, uh, we'll, we'll say an anonymous function here, set vegetable to, um, I don't know, I don't like many vegetables, broccoli. And I don't know if that's how you spell broccoli. Probably not. Okay. Set vegetable. All right, and let's close that. Oops, close that. And we'll say set veggie to bra. And hit the button. Uh, one expressions must have one parent element. So because these two are child elements, we need something wrapping them. An easy solution is a div, or you can do a fragment, which uh, I'm not sure if StackBlitz has a Babel compiler. Oh, it does. So you can use the shorthand fragment syntax here. So now we have tomato. If we do set veggie to broccoli, it will set it in here. Um, so what's happening here is we're using the set vegetable, which comes from the context, which ultimately is coming from this state hook. And uh, then what we're doing is we're passing broccoli and so it's going into the store into the through the set vegetable and setting the state so then wherever the provider is which is right here it's going to update the value and then wherever the context um you, the context hook is which is right here it's going to update this vegetable value so now that this has updated this component is going to re-render and it's going to be re rendered with the new vegetable value um, just to show how uh, kind of powerful and diverse this is, if we were to go, um, let's get out of the vegetable component and even out of the app and for whatever reason we had, we wanted a vegetable to show right here, um, like that. Now vegetables not defined, of course, so let's go ahead and say use uh, const vegetable is equal to use context vegetable context like so return that and we'll have to pull this out of course I don't think we're using use state anymore use context like so and then we're going to need the uh, context Vegetable. That is how I remember how to spell vegetable. From, oh, what am I doing? We're already pulling out the store. Might as well pull out from here. All right. So this is kind of a weird error, and I'm quite honestly surprised this is happening. Do I have a T anywhere in my code? How is this? How are we getting just this letter T? Let's see if we can find out what's going on here. Just the letter T. I wonder if anyone saw this random T anywhere. There's no T, there's just this vegetable. So I think what's happening is that we are using the context before it's the provider is actually given. So the provider is given from the store, which means that the use context has to be done from a component within the store, which is why we can't just render vegetable here. Super weird <laughs> error that we even see the T. There must have been some kind of race condition where it rendered the first letter and then realized it wasn't supposed to be rendering. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure to be honest what's happening there, but uh, interesting case nonetheless. So make sure that all of your um, state and context come within at least one component deep of your store component here. Uh, so let's try to do that somewhere else instead. Uh, so close this out. And what we'll do, we'll go into app. 
one level deeper and we'll say vegetable and we'll say um, veggies okay and then we'll just say vegetable here and we'll go ahead and use this vegetable and we don't need the setter here we actually don't need the setter here as well either we can just pull the first one um, and so we so say use context and we'll change it to vegetable context like so and of course we need to import it from our store like that um, so now what we'll do uh, we'll take away the rendering on the vegetable so now we only have the setter on the actual vegetables component and our app which is one level above it we're actually rendering the content of the state um, so now we don't need this vegetable we so if you want to pull out just a second item in this hook you just put a, a dangling comma first and then uh, that'll be fine that should be fine with all ES lint and everything so now we just have a single veggies set veggies or broccoli and it changes it there and it changes it anywhere that it is being pulled out of the contact. So I hope this video was useful and not too confusing. I apologize if I was all over the place. Um, but let me know if you have any questions down below or if you want to see some other patterns that are emerging using this new hooks style uh, where there are no classes which makes which puts an end to a lot of different debates going on in the software development world all right i'll see you guys next time